Hello everyone, welcome back to Animotion. In today's tutorial, I want to share to you some tips and tricks about GFX Sport. I've had a couple of clients and projects in the past where they asked for a GIF export. They would ask me to make it under 200 KB or 500 KB. But the thing is, it all depends on the file itself. The longer the animation is, the more colors you use, the higher the file size will be. I think that's kind of like a generic rule as well for other formats, but for GIF, it will especially be super high as many of you will probably already know. So today I just want to share to you some tips and tricks on how to minimize the size but still keeping the quality as high as possible. I have this animation so there's not much animation. I use a lot of gradients here. Please note that gradients is not the best for GIF export because then it actually includes like different types of colors and it will just create like color bending. Less color you have, the better it is. But I just want to show you the troubles of using gradients or using too many colors in GIF and how to kind of like minimize that. Basically, I have this 10 seconds animation and I'm just gonna export this file as an MP4. And I'm just gonna leave it as match source high bitrate. Great, so that's done. The next thing you wanna do is to open Photoshop. And then I want you to find your MP4 file and then just hit open. As you can see here, I already have a timeline. If you don't have it, you can go to window and then hit timeline right here. And at the moment, our FPS is 25 and we'll just leave it like that for now. I'm just going to show you the difference in size in between like 10 seconds and maybe 5 and 3. I'm just going to leave it as 10 seconds for now. And then we're going to go to file and then export and then save for web. So click on that. And as you can see, it takes a while to kind of like you see here the original, which is an MP4, it's about 8 megabytes. So you can see the file size here. It's the original is only 8 megabytes, whereas the GIF is 22.44 megabytes, which is really high. And the quality is you have color bending here. We got to work with what we have. We're going to close that. Now, what happens if we drag this timeline down to about five seconds? and then file export save for web so it's already cut down to almost half so what happened if we reduce it even down to three seconds we'll try again perfect so that's now seven megabytes which is low even lower than the mp4 so that's great because we have a lot of gradients if you change the colors to any less than 256 it's gonna look pretty bad. So even when I change it to 1 to 8, there's more bending going on. And if you change it to as low as 16, it will just look really bad. So unfortunately, I have to keep the colors to 256. And then the next thing that you wanna do, or I usually do, is to reduce the image size. I usually just kind of like start maybe 1 to 8, 0 and then just kind of like see the size change to 4.1 this, which is great but we want to make it under 200 kb if we can so we're gonna have to reduce it as much as we can reduce it to 480 so that's gonna be super small so that's already one megabyte so we're gonna play around with the other settings so this is color reduction algorithm so at the moment it's selected as selective I find that this option is the best for like a balance between quality and file size, but I'm gonna just show you the difference. So there's selective, there's percept tool. The visual itself doesn't change much, but the size kind of like bumps up. And then there's adaptive, also doesn't change much, but the size is higher than selective. And then there's restrictive. Restrictive is the lowest, but obviously it just kind of crunch your animation really badly. So I don't usually do that. So usually I would just leave it as selective. The dither algorithm, usually I would just leave it as no dither. But I'm just going to show you the different ones. Like for example, diffusion, 
it kind of like diffuse the gradient better so it does look a bit better but obviously it brought up the file size same with noise and pad yeah it just kind of like blend the gradient a bit more nicely but yeah it just use a lot of file size so i'll just leave it as no detail and i don't really have transparency so i'm gonna turn that off so sometimes when you turn off the transparency the file size will decrease but in this case it actually doesn't decrease it actually increases so i'm just gonna leave it on and i wouldn't turn on interlace because it will increase the size so just leave it as this i would jump into web snap so web snap is basically snapping the colors that are similar to each other so basically they're just snapping the colors next to each other to use like color in between those two colors obviously it just creates very obvious banding so maybe we can do like 53 i'm gonna compare it 53 and zero not much difference and also it doesn't really change the file size and then there's lossy so that's the 100 lossy obviously it looks very pixelated very crunch Although it reduced the size a lot, we don't want to do that because we want to still keep the quality. So usually I would just kind of like use a little bit of lossy. It won't change much of the quality, but it kind of like reduce it a little bit. This is how much I can reduce without reducing the quality. So this is as low as you can get one megabyte. So I'm just going to save it. And then I'm going to call this 480 pixel. 256 because that's the colors glossy 19 3 seconds so that's how it looks but it doesn't look too bad now the next thing that you can do if you still want to reduce it down and still want to keep the gradient you can reduce the frame rates under your timeline tab there's this three four lines that you can click so basically that's the timeline settings and you want to go to set timeline frame rate and then at the moment it's set as 25 so we want to reduce it to 12. so it has that kind of like cartoony kind of jittery feel which is very popular among machine design so that doesn't really matter anyway you can even like maybe reduce it a little bit more to 10. doesn't make much difference um if that's what you like you can reduce it to 10. let's go to file export and save for web already it reduced it to 2.827 megabytes with still like 1920 pixel so that has reduced it a lot so if we change that to 480 like what we did with the previous file it will be 418 kb frame rates does help a lot that's one thing that i figured out very recently because i've always been playing around with the settings inside but I never really thought that you can reduce the frame rates but still even though we've reduced the frame rates we can't get it down to 200 kb right but at least we got it down to under 500 KB, so that's something. I'm just gonna save this. The last thing that you can do if you really wanted to get it down to 200 KB, what you can do is you can negotiate by getting rid of the gradient. I'm gonna go inside every single one of these precoms, and I have this gradient layer. I'm just gonna turn it off. So my animation will be flat like that. So I'm just gonna export this as mp4 again all right now we want to open it in after effects and we're gonna do the same thing reduce it to three seconds now at the moment is on 25 frames per second I just want to kind of see how much um, it helps with the size so it's already 5.721 um so this has reduced it a lot as well obviously because we know that the frame rate has helped a lot so i'm just gonna do that set the frame rate to 10 frames per second so that's already 2.595 so that helps the good thing with having no gradient is that you can reduce the color i'm gonna go and reduce it to 16 so it still looks the same but like the size has gone down by half i can maybe instead of like reducing it to 480 i can just like keep it to 720 and that's already 300k which is great and if you reduce it to 480 that's under 200 kb we did it we did it we made it under 200 kb yeah that's the good thing about having it flat because you can reduce your colors that's great so i'm gonna save that All right, 
right now let's compare them all all right so these are the difference i guess there's a lot of things that you need to sacrifice when exporting gif there is no one rule on how to do it so yeah i hope that helps because i've spent like actually years figuring out how to minimize the size of gifs thanks so much for watching my video i hope you enjoy that please leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions on what tutorial or video you want to see next i'll see you next time